Hey everybody, Mike with Everything About Concrete. So we're inside today. We got a big barn floor we're pouring. This thing's about 60 by 32, I think, on the outside. I got 24 yards of concrete. So we got three concrete trucks coming, each one with about eight yards. Today, you know, it's really, really cold out today. It's below freezing outside right now. We actually got some heat going on inside here just to help warm it up a little bit. We got hot water in the concrete. We got accelerator in the concrete. I also got fiber mesh in there for reinforcement. The owner, you know, the owner, we, we have a real hard time getting wire mesh right now. It's just so scarce that we've just been using fiber mesh in all our concrete. Plus, we're using a 4,000 PSI mix today, too, so we got extra strong concrete. Now, our codes require in Maine for our floors to have two inches of styrofoam under them, so that's why we got styrofoam under this, too. This is more than likely going to be an unheated space, so... Just having the styrofoam under it will help a little bit. You can see Darren and Luke there. They're starting to pour that truck out. I'm I'm off. You can't see me. I'm off camera just for a second here. Just I got the laser going. I'm I'm getting my laser stick ready and just getting my grades all set. For the most part, this floor is going to be flat. You can see there's a little little drain right there, right in front. We're going to slope just a little bit around that drain. That's all the owner wanted. He's also putting a car lift in here, so as you'll see, as the video goes on, there'll be a couple like look like black squares that are deeper. That's where the car lift's gonna go. So we're gonna try to get this, we got two access points here. We got this garage door that you see right here, and then on the other end of the barn, we got another garage door. So we're gonna pour this one truck through this door and then we'll get the other two trucks through the other door, which makes for quite a pull here in the middle. So that was our access, that's what we had to deal with. But we added some high range water reducer into the mix so we could pour it pretty loose. That helped make the concrete a little bit easier to pull around. We don't, you know, most of our pours are done with before the building gets built. I mean, as the temperatures get colder, it's probably a better idea to get them built so you can add heat in case you need it. I think right now as it'll, it's about 28 degrees outside and the concrete temperature is right around 70 degrees. So it's gonna start, it's gonna start causing a lot of kind of steam in there, like steam coming off the concrete. So it's gonna get a little foggier and foggier. Wait till the end, you'll see just how foggy it got in here. It actually gets a little hard to see it's so foggy but the good thing about the styrofoam down there if the concrete temperatures are 70 degrees and we're pouring right on let's say a cold gravel cold crushed rock that really sucks the the temperature the warm temperature right out of the concrete then the concrete just sits there all day it doesn't even really set up at all the styrofoam just helps hold the temperature in the concrete so it actually helps the concrete set up even faster so we definitely don't mind pouring on top of styrofoam, especially in the cold weather. Darren's using our little chute just to angle into those corners. We use that little chute just for about every pour we do, it seems like. We've worn, I've got, I don't know how many of those little chutes I got, but we've worn holes right through them. You know, the size of a quarter or so. We've used them so much. Um, that's if you're gonna have any type of extra shoot, I would definitely recommend getting a seven or eight footer like that. You'll you'll probably use it on a lot of pours. On a pour like this, we you know we don't even really think about pumping something this small. It's just not. There's the extra driver. There's a second driver. It's just not you know big enough really for us to get a line pump to do this. We would rather just shoot it and pull it. It's just some. It's just the way we do things around here. I know a lot of you guys you like line pumping or you line pump a lot and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that for us you know we'll just grab a come along and just rake the concrete um, add a little water reducer to it or super plasticizer and something that's not going to hurt the strength and we'll just we'll just pull it to where we need it it's just for us it just seems like it's faster there's less setup less tearing down less cleanup afterwards and it's just that's just the way we like doing things you got let me know do, would you rather would you pump something like this or would you pull it just like we are let me know down in the comments
We're gonna. What we were trying to do is trying to guess how far this first truck would go without running out before we fill in this little section. <laughs> and I think we timed we timed it and, and uh, guessed it just about right. We had just enough to do this without running out right in front of that door. So I'm getting my pads in the middle right now. I'm shooting some wet pads using the laser, and I'm shooting them the exact same height as the the chalk line we got snapped on the inside of the foundation is what we go by around the outside. And then we're gonna get this screeded down. We'll back the next truck in the other door. He's out there mixing right now. We, you know, the it, when the when the temperatures are cold, we want these guys mixing up pretty, pretty early. That way it just helps heat the concrete up a little bit, speeds up the curing process. And then we'll throw some accelerator in it too. So when we get these down like this, we, you know, we don't want to mess around too long. Otherwise the concrete starts to kick off before we even get it screeded. You'll see what I mean by that in a minute. So hang out and I'll tell you what I mean by the concrete kicking off. Um, you'll know it too when it's hot like this. We always strike our doorways like this just in case the form on the doorway has a little crown to it or a dip to it. We like to strike it like that to make sure the concrete stays nice and level across that doorway. So we're going to start out using the, we're using the MBW Screed Demon Vibra Screed now, the battery operated one. This has got a 12 foot screed board on it. And we like this for flat floors like this, it just makes the screeding process a lot easier. And it goes, It's. I mean it's plenty fast enough for what we do. If you pour the right slump, let's say like a a five, six, or even you know a seven slump if you got water reducer. That's where this thing works the best. Otherwise, if it's if it's too stiff, you know it. It's a little bit more difficult to screed with something like this. It's a little bit slower. So five, six, seven slump, you're going to be just fine with something like this. You can see all that that kind of that fog. That's the steam coming off the concrete. That means the concrete's really good and hot for us. Without that, without that hot water in the concrete on a day like today, I mean, you'd be here if you were power trialing this. You'd be here till eight, nine, ten o'clock at night easily. It just so happens, you know, when when this one started to dry cure, and we put the power trials on it, we got out of here pretty early in the afternoon, all power trialed, sawed up, and everything. Now Darren's adjusting those handles down a little bit. If if your handles are up too high, it actually kind of burns your forearms. So you want to get them down low so your arms are just nice and comfort comfortable while you're pulling this thing backwards. The guy running the screed, I mean, his only real job is to give it some throttle, make sure his ends, both his ends are, are scoring, are, they're leaving a tiny little mark, and to just pull backwards on it just, I mean, just as fast as he needs to go, which isn't very fast. It's really up to the two guys raking, which is Luke on the left and then me on the right, to get the concrete to where it needs to be. And then the, the vibra screed or the vibrating screed, just make sure everything's nice and level because that board on the screed is nice and level across there. And it just, it cuts the concrete and it gives you a really nice surface to bull float. So the first truck, that's the first truck. There's eight yards right there we got dumped out. That probably, I don't know, it probably took us a total of 15 or 20 minutes to get that all out of there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you around here to the to the other door. And we'll back the next truck in, hook the chute on. And we got a 12-foot chute there we'll need. And then we're still going to have about an 8 to 10-foot pole you'll see here in a second to get that concrete to where we need it. There you go right there. So we're not quite halfway with it. So we get a the shoot the truck from the chute goes in there, probably twelve to fifteen feet, and then we got another twelve foot chute hooked onto that. And then we're probably pulling at eight to ten feet. So we had a pretty good little pull there. But when you got the right admixtures in there with the water reducer, you know, when you got a seven inch slump or slow, it moves pretty good on that styrofoam. It kinda slides right across the surface on the styrofoam. 
Now we're getting close to that floor drain. What we're doing right now is, you know, Luke's just double checking with the with the laser stick over there to make sure we're on our line. And then we're just getting this pulled out. We're gonna dump, we'll dump this entire eight yards right out, get him out of here before we do anything else. Just to get him out of the way and we can get that third truck in. For us, dumping eight yards really doesn't take that long when it's when it's all spread out like this. It's probably gonna go, if it's 30 some odd feet wide, you know, it's gonna go about 20 feet in depth, so about an area 20 by 30. And that really, you know, when, when you pour every day like us, that's not very big an area. That doesn't take very long to get screeded. So we'll, it probably takes longer to dump it out and spread it out like this than it actually does to screed it. But having a chute like that comes in real handy. I mean, I don't know, we don't line pump. I mean, we do have some line pumps up here where we're from, but we hardly ever use them. I think they the last one I used they charged like 550 bucks for a line pump, and uh, I mean, I could have I can buy that 12 foot shoe and the 8 foot shoe for less money than that, and then I have them every single day. So for us using a shoot like that is definitely worth it on something like this. If we had further distance to go, let's say this thing was 100 feet by 32 feet, then we definitely would have pumped it. You see, it takes about, what, 20 seconds to hook that chute on, and then uh, then we're off. You can see that get, we're getting more and more steam here now, the more concrete that comes in. Basically, what that concrete's doing right now is it's just, it's kind of cooling off pretty fast. So that's why it's steaming so much. The air temperature is so much colder than the concrete temperature. What we'll do is when we get done pouring, we actually got a, I don't know if you can see it, we got a heater. There's a little pot heater on that slab to the left over there where the laser is. And that thing's on low right now. Once we get this poured out, we'll close the doors back down with those tarps. We'll turn that pot heater up. That runs on propane. And that'll that'll up the temperatures in here. Probably Probably get it up in the 50s in here. So that'll help it out a lot. You know, keep the concrete at least, concrete temperatures at least in the 50s, if not in the 60s. When concrete, when the temperature of the concrete gets, when it approaches 40 degrees, you know, the heat of hydration, concrete creates its own heat during hydration when it's curing. When, when the chemical reaction takes place between the water and the cement, that creates heat. But when it's so cold out, that temperature of the concrete is around 40 degrees, that, that chemical reaction comes to almost a standstill, man, and your concrete just won't set up. If you're wondering why your concrete's drying so slow or curing so slow and you can't get a finish on it, that's why. It's just your concrete temperature is too low. So you gotta start out with them high, and then they're gonna they're gonna slowly, you know, get cooler and cooler if it's in the winter time like this. So you got to try to figure out a way to keep them up there, at least in the 50s or 60s, if you want to, you know, make an 8 to 10 or 12 hour day out of it. Otherwise, you might be on that thing all night trying to finish it. So we're trying to get this second truck emptied, get him out of there, and then we can get this pulled down. Darren's already getting most of the edges all magged out and ready to go. Next step would be to shoot the pads in the middle, get that ready. And we're gonna sl slightly slope it to that center drain that you saw. And then uh, he's, you can see we're striking, me and Lucas striking the pad, Darren's over there shooting the pad with a laser. And now the process begins again, you know, kind of copy and paste. Strike your pads, get it screeded. You can see how nice that screed works, man. That thing goes really, really nice. It's really quiet, too. We can actually talk to each other without having to yell versus a gas-powered one. Those are pretty loud. And, you know, you'd almost have to... You really got to raise your voice to talk to somebody. 
I have a link for that screed down in the description, guys. If you want to check it out, um, MBW makes it. It's uh, We've been using it all summer. It's worked really, really good for us. If you've seen any of my other videos, you've, you've probably seen us using it multiple times. I even have their gas-powered one. Their gas-powered one works really, really good too. So you really can't go wrong with either one. It kind of depends what you do. We found that you know, this one works plenty good enough with the battery. We use Milwaukee batteries in this. I actually just use a 5 amp battery. You can use up to a 12 amp. We've never had any trouble with a battery going dead um, on any of the floors we've done. If it's a fully charged battery, we've always had, uh, we've never had one go dead. And there's always, you know, the, it'll show four lights on the battery when it's, when it's full. I've never had one go below two lights on it on any of the floors we've done. So you could get multiple floors out of one battery, really, depending on how big a floor you're doing. And then if you had a 6, 8, 10, or the 12 amp batteries, I mean, you could probably go, I don't know, on, if you're doing floors like we are right here, you could probably go all week on one 12 amp battery without having to recharge it. It's really getting foggy in there now. You see all that steam. The third truck's outside now. He's mixing up, putting his accelerator in. We'll get him backed up. You can see the sun is starting to come up on that other side with that glare. It was uh, pretty early in the morning when we started. The sun wasn't even up. It's going to get a little bit more foggier in here when we start dumping that third truck out. You know, it's just all, all cooling off so fast. The only real way to stop that from being so foggy is to shut the tarp on the door and then crank the heat up. But it's not too bad. So what, what's happening now is that that second truck, he was out there mixing while we were dumping the first truck. We had accelerator in him. Now he's starting to kick off pretty good. So we decided that it would actually be a little easier just to screed this section by hand. Plus, if you remember, we had that little floor drain there. So the concrete's sloping towards that floor drain a little bit too. And we just, we like to be real fussy on slopes. So generally, when there's ever a slope in the floor, we'll, we'll hand screed it just to make sure nothing sags any more than it's going to sag normally or we're not creating a hump or a dip. We know when we hand screed and we score the way we need to that the floor is screeded really, really accurate. Now, the third truck's been out there for a while and he's been mixing Kind of, you know, his drum has slowly been, been turning. And then we add the accelerator to him. So he literally, we literally have just minutes to get him dumped out, spread out, edges magged, and screeded before it really starts kicking off. That's just the way it is in the winter. If you want to, if you want to use as much accelerator as we do, so you're not there all day and all night, then uh, boy, you gotta you gotta really know what you're doing to get it screeded and get it down. Most of our pours in the winter, let's say from you know this is this is November here, but in December to March are inside like this. So we're dealing with you know. A building that's kind of difficult to heat because most of them aren't insulated we're dealing with pouring through doorways through windows a um, lot of a lot of steam like this rarely does somebody have the inside of the building structure heated really really well with say you know and we're also dealing with the heat like a, a heater a propane heater or even a kerosene heater they throw off a ton of fumes even if they're brand new it's still you still you still smell the fumes and then they throw off a lot of moisture too so if uh if you got a let's say you got a big kerosene heater and you're trying to heat a garage up and pour on a floor like this or even a basement you get number one you got to figure out a way to vent it to the outside you got to be it's got to be sucking in fresh air but then what you'll see is you'll see moisture start to accumulate on the walls start dripping down the walls 
It's just they throw out so much moisture. It actually slows down the cure because it raises the humidity up so much that it slows the cure down. So it's just a, a battle of pouring concrete in the winter. We're going to get this down now so we know we know it's starting to set quick and uh, we'll probably got I don't know we're starting to dump him now I think we're just I think we're giving him just a little bit of a drink right now we got a little bit of him out and decided it was the slump was a little too stiff so he's got eight yards on we probably gave him five gallons right there just to get the slump to where we need it and then we'll dump the rest of this out except for one little tiny area in case we get it high we want to be able to pull that high into the low spot without having to shovel it outside Darren's jumping right on magging the edges so when we're when me and Luke get it dumped out we'll be ready to screed for me the toughest thing for me I mean personally pouring this time of year outside is just the cold my hands get really cold fast um, not so much my feet or my body it's usually just my hands and my fingertips that get really cold no matter what type of gloves I'm wearing for you guys that pour outside I mean what's what's the what's the thing that bothers you the most what gets cold on you the fastest or is it something else that makes it difficult if my like if my fingers didn't get cold it wouldn't really it doesn't really bother me to pour outside too much I've actually got a heated jacket on it's one of those Milwaukee battery operated heated jackets I'll see I'll try to find a link for it and put that down in the description too we all my guys have them I bought those for my guys too and we wear those all winter long just they take the little Milwaukee 12 volt battery and they heat up really nice it's got the heating coils on the chest heating coils on the back and I mean I'll even wear it in the truck so that's that what keep my body warm the, the, I have some heated gloves too but those are too thick to wear during a pour like this I can only wear them after the pour just to get my hands heated up but they do work good yeah I'm getting the laser out of there so we don't have to jump in there afterwards and get it out so Luke and Darren are just going to screed that last pad then we'll get this pulled down the sun is really beating down on us now you can see which makes it feel good even though it's still below 32 degrees at least the sun still feels warm but we're starting to create a, a ton of a ton of fog here or steam I guess what do you guys call it would you call it steam or would you call it fog I think it's more like steam to me We just decided, since we had the hand screed out, we would just finish this thing by hand. Get the vibra screed out, get it washed up so the concrete's not all drying on it. We're going to screed that in each way like they're doing right now, and then we'll come right out that door. Make sure that doorway's nice and flat and level. That's a 14 foot screed right there. That's you know we we got all sizes of those. Those are two by four magnesium screeds, and we got them from 14 is our is the longest one we have down to about four in two foot increments. Some, a couple of them are one foot increments, but so we got I don't know six or eight screeds that we use on different applications. Those are really lightweight too. I've had those for years. I mean, those things last forever as long as you don't bang them up. Keep them clean. So let me let me know what you guys think. Would this have been easy, just as easy to line pump easier? Is it harder? Is it worth the expense to get a line pump for something like this? Or just pulling it the way we did, is that how you would have done it? I know, I know another thing that's hard for us up here is just getting a pump, you know, trying to schedule one. They're all, you know, weeks out in advance, and 
for us, you know, our schedule changes. Well, it's what seems like daily. So it's it's hard to schedule something three weeks in advance and try to hit that day without something changing. Well, Darren's just going to get this finished up, bowl floated, and then we're going to close this down, get her, get the heat going a little bit higher, and then we'll finish this off today with a power trial, saw cut, and we'll be done. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one.